Um, thank you. Good morning, everyone, Mr. Vice President, co-facilitators, representatives of indigenous people, and your excellencies. Um, it's a privilege to be here today. Ten years ago, at the World Conference on Indigenous Peoples, world leaders reaffirmed their commitment to the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. This historic event led to significant outcomes, including the expansion of the mandate of the expert mechanism on the rights of indigenous people. It was a catalyst for enhancing indigenous peoples' participation throughout the United Nations system and activities, as member states made the commitment to consider ways and means of further enabling their effective participation and inclusion on issues and decisions affecting them. Just a few weeks ago, for the first time, indigenous participants from all seven socio-cultural regions took the floor in a regular session of the Human Rights Council, not as part of non-governmental organizations, but simply as representatives of their peoples. They drew attention to situations they face in their countries, their communities, sharing their constructive proposals for solutions and interactive dialogues with the expert mechanism and the special rapporteur on the rights of indigenous peoples. Just as indigenous peoples can use the Council to bring attention to the issues and challenges that they face, so can the international community gain much by listening to their voices, their experiences and their innovative solutions to our most pressing challenges. The effective enjoyment of indigenous people's rights has become a matter of urgency. Indigenous peoples are disproportionately affected by the triple planetary crisis, climate change, pollution and biodiversity loss, and they continue to prove through their time-tested knowledge and approaches that we do have solutions. At the national and local level, traditional practices such as community management of forests and fisheries, the revitalization of traditional technologies has been key for climate change mitigation. At the global level, indigenous peoples' active participation in the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change in the whole process has ensured that these approaches are integrated in both mitigation and adaptation measures. Indigenous peoples also have significant contributions to make in the area of access to justice. Indigenous justice systems, provided they are aligned with international human rights law, can play a crucial role in making access to justice for indigenous peoples a reality. Better coordination between indigenous and ordinary justice systems can break down the barriers that prevent indigenous peoples from accessing justice and can pave the way for other groups facing long-term structural discrimination. Enhancing the ability of indigenous peoples to meaningfully participate in decision-making also is an attainable goal. It can be done by opening up spaces where issues that directly concern them are discussed and decided. And I commend the Council for its leadership in this regard. Our office, which serves as the Secretariat of the UN Voluntary Fund for Indigenous Peoples, has been at the forefront of such efforts. Thanks to the fund, we have 20 indigenous representatives from all seven socio-cultural regions present with us here today. In a context where financial constraints continue to be one of the main obstacles to the participation of indigenous peoples, the work of the fund is invaluable, and I encourage all member states to support its mandate, both politically and financially. Dear friends, as the discussions at the first intersessional meeting underlined, we have a collective responsibility to ensure that participation of indigenous peoples is anchored in the principles of self-identification and the right to self-determination. We also need to promote the broadest possible representation of indigenous people in the Human Rights Council, taking into account their diverse forms of organization as well as gender and geographical diversity. Another important concern is intimidation and reprisals as a result of their engagement with the United Nations, an issue that will be addressed at this intersessional meeting. I want to recall that restrictions on civic space uh, have become a global phenomenon with increased attacks, intimidation and harassment against human rights defenders, journalists and other civil society representatives who seek to shed light on human rights concerns or simply to contribute to public life. 
Our data suggests that in 2023, at least 42 indigenous human rights defenders were killed in 11 countries. I'm sure the actual numbers are much higher. The targeting of representatives of indigenous peoples, including those engaged with the United Nations, deserves enhanced attention by states and United Nations entities. Collectively, we need to do more and better to provide safe and open spaces for interaction where those who speak up can be heard without fear of retribution. Your Excellencies, I invite you all to continue to build on the excellent work of the first intercessional meeting and to use this forum as a space for innovation, to exchange experiences and ideas, to strengthen the full, effective and meaningful participation of indigenous peoples in the work of the Human Rights Council. These discussions are extremely meaningful and they address a long-standing and legitimate claim from the world's 476 million indigenous people. Our office is committed to continuing to provide its full support to this and other engagements. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your remarks, Deputy High Commissioner.